So good evening. Today let us discuss an interesting play and a most popular play, Waiting for Godot, which is written by Samuel Beckett. To know a little bit about the author, Samuel Beckett is an Irish uh, by birth, and but he settled in France and he's very fond, he was very fond of uh, French literature and French language. So he wrote in French as well as in English. And he was a playwright, a novelist, a short story writer, a poet, and a theater director. And uh, he is one of the important modernist writers. He received Nobel Prize in 1969, and he died at the age of 83 on 22nd December 1989. His plays revolve around impersonal and tragicomic experiences of life with dark humor and uh, absurdity. His plays ultimately lead us to the laughter of liberation rather than getting depressed and coming out, hence the name tragicomedy. So, this play actually uh, was written in French, Onatana Godo. And it was written in 1948 or 49 by uh, Beckett in French. Now, this play, why I'm calling it as an interesting play, it has, it's a short play, it has got two acts. And only six characters. Now, out of these six character also, characters also, one character never appears on the stage. So you can say five characters. Okay. Now, who are these five characters? Let us see. You know, act one begins, the curtain is up. So what we observe is two shabbily dressed men, which indicates that they are not belonging to very elite class. But they are very much obsessed with the shoe, boots they are wearing and the hat they are wearing. They are not ready to give up their hats. And you know, those kind of imagery comes. You should read the play. I mean, it is available online also. So it's a, a like a interesting one. So they are supposed, they look like friends. Why? Because they are conversing and they are comfortable with each other. And they look from the similar background or similar kind of uh, circumstances they look. The name of these two men is Vladimir and Estragon. Now, where are they waiting? On the stage, there is a bare tree, absolutely dry, without any leaf. Okay, so they are waiting there and they start conversing on various topics, you know, I mean, uh, they are passing the time, like they are talking, they are talking that and then they, are, they reveal, during their talk, they reveal that they are waiting for someone named Godo. Now, who is this Godo? We don't know whether Godo is a human or is he a superhuman or is he a god, is he an angel or is he a Satan. We don't know. They just say we are waiting for Godo. And they don't even know why they are waiting. And they don't even know if that Godo appears. So what to ask also they are not aware. Like just look at the status. All right. While they are waiting there, two other men enter. One is Pozo who is a rich merchant and the other one is Lucky, Pozo's slave, who is holding all the luggage and then moving with her master. And now this fellow, Pozo, he is on the way to his market, crossing the wood and he meets these two characters. So his purpose is to go and sell Lucky. Some he has got fed up of this slave, so he wants to sell and make some quick bucks and come back. So, so that was the thing. So in, he he halts there and he talks to these men. And in between, he tells Lucky also, come on now, you keep your luggage down and entertain these two people. So he entertains and, you know, he talks to them and he entertains, he sings and everything. Now, after which these two people leave the stage, who? Pozo and Lucky. After Pozo and Lucky leave, enters a young boy. Now, this boy comes and starts uh, talking to these uh, Vladimir and uh, Estragon. He says that, I have I am a messenger from Godo and Godo is not going to come today. So he is coming tomorrow. This is the message I was asked to deliver. So these two men ask, have we met you anywhere before? That boy says, no, I am seeing you for the first time. I have not met you. And then again, they asked, uh, have you seen Godo? How does he look like? Are you working from him? So many questions they remember. He says, no, 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 no. I haven't seen Godo. I, am, I, 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 I don't know how he looks also. I haven't even heard him. But I am his messenger. I have got a message. Again, see the absurdity. 
if you don't know somebody if you have never heard somebody then how how come you can bring the message of others so that is thing so then these people feel uh, the two friends na no? they feel useless waiting for who to know should we wait or should we go away they are contemplating so they say okay let's leave now let's move away but they don't move an inch they stand on the stage which indicates that still their wait is not over and they are going to stand in the curtain then comes the second act second act begins with the next day next day again these two people meet but now the scene is slightly different here now there is this bare tree which has got few leaves sprouted five to six leaves are sprouted there as an audience we need to think how come any tree produce leaves or sprout leaves or develop leaves within a matter of 24 hours within a day now it might not be even 24 hours who knows like what time they came in so it means this indicates that these two have lost the track of time there is no orientation of time this is also another important thing so actually this is akin to our lives like when people they want all big things they want a miracle and they will think okay something is going to happen some miracle is going to happen and they never work towards it they never do any planning towards it but they sit and only like you know mentally imagine okay i'm going to get this i'm going to get that and with one fine day everything will fall in place so it is like uh, if you keep on waiting perpetually like this without understanding what you are waiting for and what you exactly really want see it is like people are telling i want to become very successful and popular are you successful in what and popular in what so what are your uh, you know plans for that to do like what is your goal see uh, becoming successful success means so many things to so many people for some earning lot of money may be success for some excelling in something some art or performance may be a success for some simple living but i am living worry free is a success so definition of success is not universal not ubiquitous it is completely up to the individuals so if you just don't know what is what success means to you and what happiness means to you you keep on waiting then what happens like how the time lapse is there in this play like that time will slip out of our hands just like water slips out of our cupped hand that is what uh, you know i could interpret then lucky and after some time lucky and pozo enter again but this time there is a complete uh, change of the events the tables have turned completely pozo has become blind and lucky has become dumb just imagine pozo as a master and lot of money and uh, Uh, at the back end call he was making uh, lucky dance to his tunes has become blind and now he is dependent on him so he is holding his uh, thing i mean you know he is holding his shoulder and then walking look at lucky's halat he has to take the burden of his master plus his own burden plus the luggage and everything so the minute lucky just you know falls down or he just falters and this fellow also falls so that also is there you have to know and uh, then after uh, this lucky who was verbose who used to talk who used to sing who entertain who dance and now he has become dumb now these people also leave after they leave then you know pozo don't doesn't even remember that uh, previous day he met these two men or previous night he met his two men this shows the state of confusion that completely in a confused state he is so he didn't he doesn't even realize that now just think of it Pozo is here blinded with power. It is more, more something more than a physical blindness. What he wants to imply here. So because of he, uh, his, uh, you know, he was blinded with power and money and his position or his uh, social status. So he ill treated others. And if such a thing becomes uh, anybody's part of personality, everybody will shun such a person. See, you may have a lot of money. You may be very intelligent. You may have everything, but if you don't have the correct attitude, if you don't have concern for others, and if you don't uh, take care of others, or you know, like uh, no relation will sustain. Everyone will shun. So then, such people have to become dependent on those who work for money. Precisely, people who are in need, whatever torture you give, they will still go through it, and then say others won't do it. Today, this was written in 1969, so it was valid. Today, 
you talk arrogantly to your driver he will just quit your job without even telling you next day he will not turn up and you are frantically calling him and his mobile is switched off these are all the situations nowadays okay and after 8 days you will come to know that he is working at your uh, you know like maybe neighbor's house or you know somebody else in the call so that is the situation even the maids of they just don't care if you insult them if you talk and humiliate them next day they won't show up for work but this that is why maybe he has used the word slave here slaves are have no choice we all know what slavery is right so that is what the right thing and another thing what happens is like uh, it could also be as i told you it's more than physical blindness so it could be a kind of physical blind i mean psychological blindness you know with no clarity of thought okay and the no discrimination between good and bad no discrimination between right and wrong and uh, such people with arrogant attitude they are emotionally empty they are they starve emotionally and completely grow dependent on few people whom they know okay they will be there with them permanently without uh, shutting them down because they know nobody is going to get stuck to them or uh, remain with them so such emotional starving may lead them to become slaves sometimes to drugs and uh, smoking and alcoholism and so on that is another flip side of uh, human behavior now lucky is dumb, dumbness now how do we think about lucky is blindness lucky is blindness is like acceptance of all the ill treatment and suffering and all the crap the life has uh, thrown at him so he sometimes you know people behave like lucky when you re- live in a abusive relationship there are men who drink and whack the wives and still the ladies they if they don't have any other means they will say no no the things will improve one day he will become better or even in friendship or even in work relationship any human interaction you take so staying in that abusive friendship help him sorry abusive marriage or even uh, working under some uh, you know like nasty person or uh, living through toxic situation is like accepting your your uh, you know like uh, helplessness as your fate and living see no human being is helpless you all can carve your own uh, things like but only thing is uh, you should devise and you should strategize and you should come out of that so that is how lucky is this thing shows then both these people leave like again lucky in the second scene uh, lucky and uh, pozo leave the scene and then boy enters again now this time the boy comes he says today also he is uh, i mean godo is not coming so these two are continuing to wait uh, vladimir and estragon but immediately they say are yesterday you came and told me na they told us na that he is coming today the boy says no i never met you then who was it you only came no 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 he may be my look alike he may be my brother you have met i haven't seen you for the first time he says and the boy leaves and these two people are really really fed up now they say now let us go like you know there is no point in waiting for any good let's go so but but again they don't move they just stand still and the curtain falls it means they still continue their waiting it means many a times what we do is we keep on waiting and we get into a kind of uh, you know what do i say it's not exactly hallucination so it is your dream world and you want to say fix the things mentally okay so one day it is it will happen one day i'm going to be successful i want to do or too much of perfection attitude waiting for that moment that is what this play signifies now vladimir and estrogon are not sure for whom they are waiting and what they are waiting also if ever godo appears they don't even know what to ask him see the situation okay so this is similar to all those who lead a purposeless life or you know they get if you are leading a purposeless life sometimes you don't know how to react because you have no goal set you have no purpose so then you go get into incommunicado so you just don't uh, converse and you abruptly end uh, uh, friendships you abru- abruptly end relationships that's what is going to happen now the play begins itself with absurdity they talk they get uh, they interact and they you know like they think of uh, ending their life just like that without anything they are normally talking and everything and uh, they think okay let us hang to this tree and die are what kind of thing is this it means and also like what happens is then vladimir says no 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 it is a good idea let us wait let us continue waiting so they are in, in their imaginative imaginative world and they never come out of it and they never work again there is no proper action plan i would call it as 
Now, Lucky, as I discussed earlier, also he represents submissiveness, accept torture, and you know things that okay, torture is inevitable fate for me. And while Pozo's power uh, uh, makes him a power hungry man, and he is devoid of any mercy and remorse. So what he feels is whatever I do is right. I mean, I have bought this person as a slave, and slaves were never treated like human beings. All of us know in the human is the worst thing. And actually, literally, he lashes uh, Lucky with a whip and makes him move quickly. When the poor slave is carrying the bag and he's unable to walk, and he says, "He says, come on, move. What is wrong with you?" And he doesn't even ask him to sit down. When he entertains and everything, immediately the Lucky that guy has picked up his luggage and stand. He didn't. He was not even asked to sit. So that shows the kind of thing. And Lucky is holding a luggage in his hand, puts it down, and. Uh, when his master says dancing, he will do, and then again he will do. Now he will, uh, you know, pick the luggage. What does this signify? See, sometimes, like you know, all of us go through some kind of crap or the other. It is uh, nobody escapes that, you know. Nobody's life is completely bed of roses. All of us go through different challenges. Only they come in different forms, you know. Somebody may face financial crisis, uh, crisis, or somebody may have a bad relationship with the spouse or with the in-laws, whatever kind of thing. We all face many kind of things or work-related problems or uh, anything like our health-related, anything like anything. So what happens is if we completely, we have to strategize and try to come out of those problems. Instead of that, if you continuously think that, then we become like lucky. Constantly carrying that burden on our shoulder. Oh my God, he ditched me, she ditched me, and the, my boss gave promotion to somebody else, and she didn't give to me. That day she had told this, and my sister-in-law had told like this to me, and you know my mother-in-law spoke like this to me. All kind of things, like you know, you go on and on, and only when we are doing something or we are actually applying our mind, we are free. The minute we are free from whatever act we are doing and suddenly we get into the mode of thinking, that is what lucky represents. Uh, that's what I could feel, you know. So we all have problems, all of us face problems and there, there is, a, life has to be a balance. Just imagine if your life was completely like, like a film may what they show, you know, all your superheroes and superheroes, oh, all the time, goody, goody and everything and lots of money is there, everybody is, if you had that kind of a life, you would get bored. Because life has challenges, when we get something good and it is enjoyable and we enjoy that and we enjoy our successes, whether it is little or big. So that's what it is. So we have to try and come out of it, not behave like lucky. Do something for the sake of doing and again go back to that mode and again start thinking and pitying yourself and accepting uh, all the crap and nonsense as your fortune. So that you should not. That's what I said. Then they pick up the luggage and they left I swear. And after the boy goes also, this uh, freezes. Now, if we reflect back on our life, we, we carry on from our birth. I mean, you know, we are conditioned. Okay. We are, as soon as we are born, our parents take care of us. They teach us good things, good manners. And, you know, they make us accept social norms. We are sent to school and we go sometimes. Uh, you know, our own uh, uh, our own parents sometimes project their ambitions. Oh, I wanted to become a doctor. I didn't become a doctor, but you have to become a doctor. That's also wrong. Never do it to your kids like that. We can't impose our thoughts and our things on that. So sometimes what happens is everybody gets married, so we get married. Everybody produces children, we produce children. And you know, like uh, what I mean to say is if you don't have a purpose in life, then it is, I don't know what kind of a living it's going to be. And uh, you know what? We get our one fine day, if you're living a purposeless life, one fine day, you make a lot of money, you chase money, but you don't know what to do with that money. And you lose your health, you lose your uh, uh, relations, everything you lose. What are you going to do with ma that money? You're not going to carry it forward. When your final ticket comes, now your place is reserved. Whatever way Yamadutas want to take you, they will take you. So everything is going to lie. So enjoy when it lasts. Enjoy means not just throwing money and spending money. I'm not talking of that. Whatever comes to your mind, you do. Whatever gives you happiness, you do. I mean, you know, get into hobbies or whatever, like, or read good books. Whatever we can do. So that is what we understand. So we should not lead life without any purpose is what I wanted to say. And uh, you know what? 
again never get into the victim mode once we start getting into that victim mode then you know like there is no end to it uh, i i hear people saying oh i was so bright but my parents didn't really you know care and they themselves were uneducated and they didn't educate me or my father never bothered about us and he never gave money I, all these kind of nonsense how how long are you going to blame others for your fault other day i i explained when i was talking about no exit how we see the world and see that problem is there with everybody if you are so bright there are so many success stories rag to riches stories why you didn't become one of them need to sit and reflect right and also the next thing is one typical question people ask is why always wrong things happen to me okay i am such a good person i never harmed anybody and all i have i only have to face the thing but you know what i feel suppose i face some challenge or i face something bad in my life if i ask that question why i uh, why it happens to me it shouldn't have happened to me then am i okay if it happens to x y z i never say that neither to god nor to myself whatever has to happen whatever see certain things we have control we have to you know try to control it we some things we don't have control we just have to you know come out of it and move forward that is what i feel so if it doesn't it should not happen to me then is it okay if it happens to my friend or if it happens to my neighbor or somebody else no not at all so that attitude also we need to come out so these modernistic plays or modernistic writings that they make you think a lot so i agree completely with absurdism like uh, even camo says you know man is not absurd world is also not absurd now reflect on this a uh, very sweet sentence man is not absurd world is not absurd but the interaction of man with the world is definitely absurd what a million dollar statement this is it means there is nothing wrong with humans also there is nothing wrong with the world only when that interaction begins now there is lot of absurdity around okay so it depends on what we really want from our life so let the behave, uh, world behave the way it wants to behave we have no control over it right but we have to be strong inside and convert every challenge into opportunity that is the message so if you keep on waiting some fine day everything is going to happen like uh, waiting for godo you will keep on waiting in life and nothing materializes then you can't blame your fate or if you if you achieve little success or little whatever empowerment you is a definition is for you don't start pre, uh, treating others mercilessly then you know that is your psychological blindness more than physical blindness what pozo refers and when we talk of this uh, lucky he may be a slave but he is a human being like us only right whatever level you are in you should never lose that self concept and you should never lose that self confidence so never say okay it is my fate and i have to accept it i have to live the life this way that is also wrong so i hope you liked this uh, video and if you liked it please please share with your uh, like minded friends and uh, leave your comments i would lo love to hear from you and you could write even your interpretation so that i will get to learn something out of it because life is constant learning you know and i call myself a lifelong learner so thank you so much